جغرافی های ایران هم در نقطه حساس است چهار راه دنیاست هم از زمین هوا As darkness falls and revelers take to the streets, a song of hope rises into the Tehran sky. Tonight, Iranians are celebrating Nowruz, the ancient Persian New Year. They are commemorating the sacred fire that was entrusted to them by Zoroaster, the first prophet of mankind at the very dawn of time. Yet today, Iran is accused of wanting to set the world on fire. Since 1979, Iran has fanned the flames of Islam and ignited the Middle East. It has defied America, threatened Europe, and challenged world order. Ever since the Islamic Revolution, Iran has been feared. Yet, the great empires have been at war with this land for the past hundred years. A war for control of the Earth's secret fire. A war for oil that would lead to even higher stakes, nuclear power. This is the story of a century of war, the story of an age-old people still seeking a course between religion and revolution, domination and independence, east and west. A story of power unveiled. Behind modern Iran lies the Qajar civilization, all but forgotten today. It was here in the Golestan Palace in the years following the French Revolution that the Qajar dynasty attempted to revive the glory of Darius the Great, the Silk Roads, and Shiite Islam. But the storm clouds of progress were gathering. The colonial powers were at the gates. These were the days of the great game, when England in the south and Russia in the north competed for control of the seas between Europe and Asia. Caught between Iraq, the Caucasus, and Afghanistan, Persia was already a powder keg. Persia, which would soon change its name to Iran, was already having to bow to foreign power. An 11-year-old boy was the last of the Qajar dynasty to accede to the throne. The monarchy was flailing. Its dying reign lasted two decades. In 1905, news of European revolutions and nationalisms echoed through the bazaars of Tehran. Word was out on the streets. Change was brewing. The intellectuals, middle classes, and religious leaders rose up. In 1906, Iran was the first Middle Eastern country to adopt a constitution and a Western-style parliament. In this case, it was a discussion about the outside of the country. It was a discussion about the outside of the country of the country. و به تدریج حمله به مظاهر دینی و توسعه فساد در حقیقت روحانیت تصورش این بود که تجدد در حال از بین بردن دین هست نه تنها بین انقلاب و دین در آغاز تضادی نبود در اون وقت اقشار مذهبی تضادی با غرب احساس نمی کردن بلکه برعکس بود وقتی که پیشرفت های غرب رو می شنیدن 
مخصوصا از لحاظ آزادی و قانون مداری برشون بسیار جذاب بود There was a general consensus among the leaders including the religious leaders and the liberal leaders or laymen روح انقلاب مشروطه درست مذهب و اسلام درش خیلی پررنگ بود ولی روح انقلاب تجدد خواهانه بود ایرانی ها از یه خواب نسبتا طولانی بیدار بشن و متوجه بشن که از کاروان تمدن جهانی فاصله گرفتن But it was not the alliance between Islam and democracy that led the country towards modernization The 20th century would be revolutionized by the discovery of oil. Before 1908, the oil was known seeping from the rocks in Iran uh, from antiquity, and uh, they, were, they were called the burning fires. Le pétrole, c'est une malédiction hein, pour, pour tous les pays qui euh, le découvrent. In some respects, it's been a curse, but in others, it has been a great blessing because it was the first country to have uh, developed oil from the, with, the, with the British in there, and uh, this has enabled the country to develop in many ways. On April 14, 1909, the Anglo-Persian Oil Company was born. London established its power. The main imperialist regime during of those, those, those days uh, was uh, Britain. And we can say that they were trying to have good control on the politics of Iran. And through having this industry of the oil, for sure they wanted to control the future of Iran economically as well. The fact is that the wealth of the country is taken by that contractor and is taken out. They even did not have any kind of obligation to train the Iranians that they were working for them. As Europe became mired in the horror of the trenches and Russia plunged towards Bolshevism, Persia sank deeper into chaos. Out of the chaos of the World War came a new leader, Reza Khan, colonel of an Iranian Cossack regiment. In 1921, Reza Khan, with a handful of men, marched into Tehran and assumed direction of affairs. و زمانی که دولت قاجار 15 سال بعد از مشروطه از بین رفت و دولت جدیدی آمد، نیاز به یک ایدئولوژی سیاسی تازه داشت و نیاز به یک سری بنیادهای تاریخی، یک سری ارزشهای تازه و یک سری افکار جدید. در واقع Like Ataturk in Turkey, Reza Shah was a westernizer. He too believed that the key to progress was national revolution, armed forces, industry, and secularism. He had a lot of admiration for Ataturk. When Ataturk had created a republic, he thought he could be the president of the republic. So he searched. Il a cherché à instaurer la république en Iran, mais le clergé chiite s'y opposait formellement. Tazadi bin Reza Shah wa rouhaniyat be wujud amad. After 1,300 years, the women of Iran have been emancipated. They may go about unveiled, free to mix with other men and women, and to take part in the life of their country. در واقع یکی از حرکت هایی که پدر شاه کرده بود هم مسئله کشف هجاب بود که یک حرکتی بود که در واقع درش خواسته خودش رو تحمیل می کرد به زنان جامعه همونطور که امروز هم هجاب تحمیل میشه به زنان جامعه رزا created educational system based on modern western type like schools universities and so forth and this was something that the religious group in iran did not appreciate ye seri nahadhay modern ro dar iran be wujud avord 
He did it by force, but he, he brought the country together. While forcing his country into the modern world, Reza Shah returned to its origins, bringing back Darius, Zoroaster, and Persepolis in order to oppose the Shiite clergy. Persia became Iran, the land of Aryans. Islam was to be but a memory. الگویی رو که در ایران تلاش میکنه به اجرا در بیاره همون مفهومی از ناسیونالیسم هست که در اروپای غربی جریان داره. But democracy and Islam rebelled. Two parliamentarians, one secular, Mohammad Mossadegh, the other religious, Hassan Modaris, came forth as leaders of the opposition. Modaris یکی از همین پنج مشتهدی بود. که از طرف حوزه های علمیه یعنی از طرف مراجع شیعه انتخاب شده بود که این بیاد در مجلس شورای ملی اون وقت که دزارت داشته باشه بر مصوبات مجلس از فار از مدرس واز کانسرند رضا شاه واز ا استونچ اف بریتیش اند هی واز نات ا ناشنالیست از هی تری تو شو دیم سلفز Mossadegh was exiled, Modares imprisoned and then killed. Through his intransigence, Reza Shah had resuscitated the founding myth of Shiite Islam, the Islam of the poor that has upheld Persian identity by sublimating all ideas of resistance and martyrdom. Modares' death turned him into one of the legendary imams sacrificed in the name of God and the people. In Iran today, the anniversary of his assassination is celebrated as Parliament Day. Reza Shah's period of governance was the period which brought Iran into the beginning of a century where most of the countries in the world were developing and progressing. Abadan, refinery town and oil port. The times were different then. Oil had been discovered uh, in Iraq in 1927-28, the huge Kirkuk field, um, the interests were shifting towards, um, uh, you know, Iraq. Uh, Iran wasn't the, 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 the single, the sole uh, country with oil there. Now it was Reza Shah who rebelled. While totalitarianism was gaining ground across Europe, for the first time in its history, Iran appealed to the Society of Nations. And the fact is in 1933, almost 32 years after the contract, there was a dispute between uh, Reza Khan regime and uh, British. The way that Anglo-Iran oil company was cheating Iran out of its uh, revenue, something had to be done. He managed to get certain terms and conditions changed in that agreement. And the contract was to start with for 60 years. It came to be for altogether 90 years. So you can see that by this way of correction and, and amending the contract, finally it was not to the Iranian benefit. And that is why the event of nationalization really developed within the political circles of Iran. The defeat was moral, political, and economic. Reza Shah thought he could lessen the stranglehold of Britain and the Soviet Union by introducing a third partner, Germany. But with Hitler's rise to power, the fever that was taking hold of Europe spread once again to Tehran. He thought if he actually collaborated somehow with the Germans and used their technology, the, the economic uh, knowledge and so forth, that he could bring Iran into a position of a neutral country. to talk about Reza Shah and his relation with the Nazis, with the Germans. Uh, after all, he's not the only one. The uh, Iraq and the Arab world, many people were pro-German because they were anti-British and anti-Russian, anti-allies. Uh, On the eve of the Second World War, Reza Shah's protests of neutrality made no difference. Oil made Iran a pivotal target. 
The Russians invaded from the north, the, the British invaded from the south. It was very important to, to get to oil, secure it. The meeting was simple enough. The Soviet officer firing a very light to inform headquarters that an Allied front had now been formed from the Arctic to Libya. They divided the, the country up and kind of ran it. Um, it. The war was all important for them and there was no way I think Iran could, could escape this kind of uh, division of, of the spoils in the country for, for the time being. And they forced Reza Shah to abdicate. Thirty years later, his son, the reigning Shah of Iran, recalled this humiliation. What I reproach, although I have my paternal sentiments forbidding me, what I reproach eventually my father is not to have been mined the oil fields ah. and tell you that if you come, I'm going to blow up everything. The swearing in of the new Shah, who is well disposed towards Britain, was a ceremonious event. Inside, in the presence of the cabinet and army chiefs, he took the oath and signed his name for the first time as Shah of Persia. In December 1943, over a year before Yalta, Roosevelt, Churchill and Stalin arranged a meeting in Iran to orchestrate the end of the war. But the Tehran Conference also heralded a new world order. All three delegations paid their respects to the Shah whose country, later in the proceedings, was the subject of a special declaration by the three powers of full economic assistance for the Kingdom of Iran. After Yalta, the Cold War took over the globe. From Eastern Europe to Asia and the Middle East, the world became a stage for clashes between Washington and Moscow, Iran would be their first rehearsal. Iran and America have a history of Iran. And the history of Iran and Iran is necessary to have a strong and strong relationship. So the pipeline goes, over the hills and under the rivers, past ancient cities and modern pumping stations, beside roads and caravan tracks and sun-dried villages of mud and down to the plains at last. Until with the hills and the deserts behind and the wells far away, the pipelines of Khuzestan are drawn together and into the great oil city of Abadan. Abadan. Many people know the name now in terms of argument and uncertainty who never saw the place, nor really knew that such a curious, complex city stands there in the delta of Tigris and Euphrates a great temple to the 20th century god of oil, a nerve center of the Middle East. And yet, less than a lifetime ago, there was only the desolate, unpopulated desert and an empty island. A global drama would be acted out, its players serving as both winners and losers, a tragedy in which each believed they held the key. Mohammad Mossadegh, now back in power as prime minister. Ayatollah Kashani, leader of the religious party. Avril Harriman, President Truman's special envoy. The Shah of Iran, of course. Stalin waiting in the shadows. And oil, the key protagonist on which the plot unfurling from Tehran to the shores of the Persian Gulf hinged. In the spring of 1951, in a great surge of patriotic fervor, the Iranian parliament voted to nationalize the oil industry. Before Nasser or Nehru, Mossadegh embodied the rebellion of the so-called Third World in the face of colonialism. Once again, Iran acted as a laboratory. He was a prominent politician, a person who had his education outside. He was a lawyer, had good education in law in Switzerland. And he was a real nationalist. He hated the British influence in Iran. He came to the conclusion that the only way to terminate that influence was to nationalize the oil industry and get rid of the Anglo-Iranian oil company. 
that period coincided with the time when eight major oil companies actually exercised complete dominance of the world oil industry. So they were in a very powerful position to be able to fight against Mossadegh's idea of nationalization. The Persians think that by nationalizing oil, they are going to get rich. Unfortunately, the reverse will be the case. The Iranians paid heavily for their restored pride. The British enforced a complete embargo intended to smother the nationalist movement. Iran's leader was physically weak, but his political will had not been quelled. Iranian economy was under sanction, oil sanction, the first oil sanction that you can see. And this first oil sanction against Iran has stopped Iran from receiving any income out of the export of the oil. The embargo had the opposite effect, sparking a united front. Ayatollah Kashani, who had returned from exile a few years earlier, would build the bridge between the Nationalist Party and the Religious Party. Everybody knows that his background was a pure, a pure, good Iranian that was for the sake of Iran saying what he believed. And because he was a top-ranking clergyman, he knew that whatever he's saying should be based on his belief, and the belief of him was the belief of the common people. Les délégués du gouvernement pour la nationalisation ont pris l'avion pour rencontrer les envoyés britanniques. Comme viatique, ils emportent le Coran, la collade du Grand Mella et un des drapeaux que brandissent leurs partisans et qui portent inscrit « Si Dieu est avec nous, quel obstacle pourra nous arrêter ?» This had to be looked after carefully, influence had to be retained, but at the same time, uh, deny oil um, and, and, and influence over Iran to the Soviet Union. So it was, it worked uh, well on both accounts, both for oil and for the Cold War. For another party, it too, founded on the legacy of the revolutionary ideals of 1905, was at work. Operating from Moscow, the two-day Communist Party was stirring up the streets. Demonstration culminate in the tearing down of signs over company offices and the raising of the Iranian flag over the installations. Desperate mediation efforts are made as Britain appeals to the International Court in The Hague and receives a temporary injunction against the seizure. The U.S. chose this moment to enter the fray once and for all. President Truman dispatched a special envoy to Iran, Averill Harriman, whose official mission was to act as the mediator between the Iranians and the British. Mr. Harriman undertakes a series of conferences with Prime Minister Mossadegh. Out of these conferences, hope emerges that the crisis that threatens world peace may now be averted. As it had done in Korea, and would soon do in Guatemala, Indonesia, and Vietnam, the U.S. chose to intervene in Iran. Its first aim was to contain the Soviet threat. But that day in Abadan, Averill Harriman was above all party to the compelling decline of the old European powers. Washington would fill the void left by London. In Iran, the global oil drama was being taken over by a new director. In the fall of 1951, Mossadegh gave the British staff one week to leave the site. The evacuation of women and children by air is stepped up as tension rises. The last 300 British technicians are evacuated a day before the deadline set for their expulsion by the Iranian government. And with their departure, the whole free world faces two problems, that of a depleted oil supply and a possibility of a war-provoking incident in the Near East. The 
برای حفظ استعمار دوران استعماری از جون خواهد Like Reza Shah before him, Mossadegh appealed to the international institutions and flew to the United Nations in New York. After we've heard them, after we've heard the representative of the Iranian government speaking for his government, if his statement does not appeal to us, then we can postpone. But to postpone without giving them a chance to be heard would be a violation of the spirit of the Charter. crisis comes to America's shores as Premier Mohammad Mossadegh arrives in New York to plead his nation's case before the United Nations. Le Conseil de sécurité n'est nullement compétent pour examiner cette plainte. The United Nations and the Hague Court ruled that they were not competent to judge. The old war horse won a dual victory. But Washington feared the Iranian example would spread. Embroiled in anti-communist McCarthyism, America was torn between international law and controlling the oil. Americans were lying, even when they were lying to Mr. Mossadegh when they received him in Washington. They were lying when they were trying to be nice to him. They were lying when they were saying that we are going to just do some uh, so, a sort of politics in order to solve this problem. They wanted to solve the problem for their own sake, and they wanted just to have their food in the same food prints that the British had for a long time in Iran. Mossadegh wanted a democratic Iran. He held the communists at bay and distanced himself from Kashani, president of the parliament. In the U.S., the newly elected President Eisenhower was keen to settle the Mossadegh question. He forgetting that if he could not have the support of the religious leaders and having the masses with him, very soon, those who are sneaking, like CIA, intelligence service, and USSR. I think what, what Mossadegh was, he was using the communists, <coughs> the Tudor party, against others so that he was balancing between them, playing one off against the other. But I don't think that he was uh, very pro. Mossadegh uh, was a problem for the US and for the British. And happened the part of the history, which is the saddest part of us for the contemporary history of Iran which was the coup d'etat. The coup was organized by the British and the Americans. I think the Americans had the lead role at the end. And what was the plan? Just toppling a nationalistic government. Good or bad, having friction with the religious leaders or not. It was part of the mystique of the agency at that time. It seemed that uh, this was sort of a magic weapon, uh, covert action run by the CIA. The same scenario would be played out across the world as far as Pinochet's Chile. The putsch came from above. The Shah appointed an army man, General Zaidi, as head of government. But Mossadegh discovered the plot during the night. Thinking he had failed, Mohammed Reza sought refuge in Europe. The Shah and his queen arrive in Rome after an alleged attempt by the Imperial Guard to arrest Dr. Mossadegh and a refusal by the Shah to dissolve parliament at Mossadegh's request. In Tehran, it looked as if Mossadegh would soon be named president. And on his orders, troops occupied the Shah's palaces and surrounded parliament. On August 19, 1953, utter confusion reigned. Communists, the police, the army, loyalists paid by the U.S. Embassy, and religious leaders led by Ayatollah Kashani took to the streets. Symbolically, Mossadegh's house was destroyed during the night. Operation Ajax, orchestrated by the CIA, was underway. To the party, very easily, by just taking their people out from the street and even supporting those who were against Mossadegh made the problem that the coup d'etat could be done in half a day. Chassé par le docteur Mossadegh, le Shah d'Iran voit à nouveau triompher sa cause et regagne son pays grâce à la contre-révolution déclenchée à Téhéran par son premier ministre, le général Zaidi, appuyé par l'armée et la police. He never forgot. And, and, and actually resented because it reminded him of at the time when he was so weak that he had to have the support of the CIA uh, and the United States to bring him back. La même foule qui acclamait Mossadegh a acclamé le chat et les statues hier abattues sont aujourd'hui remises en place. Un chapitre est provisoirement clos dans la tumultueuse histoire de l'Iran.
Mohammed Reza, the, the son of Reza Shah. Yes, well, you know, he started off, he started off as a rather weak person, but somehow or other, he was given a, maybe it was a CIA, they brought it, when he brought him back, said, you've got to stiffen your back and you've got to do something to make, uh, as you say, a soft dictatorship, which he, which, he took, which he did, and then you were controlled. You didn't have this under Mossadegh. You didn't have this at all. It, it was a complete change. So there was a taking over then with the Savak and the like, and you had a soft dictatorship. Western opinion was relieved and joined the media bandwagon denouncing Mossadegh. Iran went back into isolation. En pyjama et robe de chambre, le docteur Mossadegh s'est présenté mourant au tribunal de Téhéran. Après quoi, le pétulant moribond devait noyer ses accusateurs dans un torrent d'éloquence qui s'est écoulé durant des jours. Tout le monde était épuisé, sauf le docteur Mossadegh, qui se classe définitivement comme le premier comédien du siècle. « Vos pitreries dépassent de loin Charlot », a déclaré le procureur en demandant la peine de mort pour l'accusé. Mossadegh was condemned to exile. His minister of foreign affairs was executed. Ayatollah Kashani was censored and dismissed. The Savak, the Shah's secret police, organized harsh repression. A network of 500 communist officers was dismantled. 28 leaders were executed. There was a crackdown on students. On December 13, 1954, the same day that Vice President Nixon arrived in Tehran, three students were killed during a demonstration. Nawab Safavi, a fundamentalist activist who had been the first to call for an Islamic Republic, became the ultimate symbol when he was sentenced to death and executed for terrorist attacks committed by his followers. Like countless others before him, he recited the Quran right up until his execution. Shiite Iran had found its new martyrs. Before his arrest, Safavi had traveled to Qom to meet a young Ayatollah who refused armed action, preferring a people's movement. His name was Ruhollah Khomeini. The Shah of Iran believed he had wiped out all opposition. He was wrong. Shiism has replayed its grand gesture of popular sacrifice for centuries, ever since the assassinations of Ali and Hussein, the Prophet's son-in-law and grandson. The holy city of Qom, with its religious schools and university, became the sanctuary for the resistance movement. In these desperate times, Islam was all the Iranians had left. <laughs> کودتاییشو انجام گرفت و شاه برگشت و مصدق دستگیر شد ما در اون وقت بر حسب افکار سیاسی خودمون که از تبلیغات دشمنان بود خوشحال بودیم اما مدتی نگذشت که به اشتباه خودمون آگاه شدیم U.S. really didn't realize how deeply offensive it was to have put the Shah back on the throne, how deeply offensive it was to the Iranian people. And this was something that festered all during those 25 years. We were looking for people uh, to lead countries who would not be part of the expansion of the new Soviet empire. Iran rolls out the red carpet, the Persian carpet, that is, to hail Iconi's arrival for the motorcade passed over costly Persian rugs spread in the street, as the president is cheered by three quarters of a million along the route. At the royal palace, Shah Pahlavi adds to the presence Ike received in the course of his historic mission, a portrait that will go to the Eisenhower Museum in Abilene. I had a very real feeling at that time that Nuclear energy was an important source of energy for the world. The 72 countries are represented at the atomic conference promoted by the United Nations. Oil, coal, and all other power sources except atomic energy approached exhaustion, said conference president Dr. Baba. It shows the absolute necessity of finding some new source of energy if the light of our civilization is not to be extinguished because we have burnt out our fuel reserves. The Atoms for Peace program was strategic. By placing Iran at the heart of the Baghdad Pact, the Oriental version of NATO, 
the U.S. wanted to hem the USSR in. Now more than ever, Tehran was the satellite of Washington. America gave Iran its first nuclear reactor. Through urbanization, industrialization, and militarization, the Shah of Iran was intent on establishing his country as a great nation on the Western model. By the early 1960s, the young, inexperienced Shah, whom the Allies had brought to power during the Great War, had turned into a steely autocrat. He saw himself as an enlightened monarch, but did he realize that he appeared to be an all-out third world dictator? His iron rule was starting to worry even his own protector. You have to remember that when John Kennedy came to power, he considered it as a result of non-modernization or even non-westernization of the system, politically as well as economically. Your Majesties, I speak on behalf of all of my fellow Americans in welcoming you to the United States. The interest of both of us is the same, to maintain our freedom, to maintain our peace, and to provide a better life for our people. There should be some kind of movement in the third world countries. Otherwise, all of them will be left. I will be fallen to the communist hands. Iran is an important link in the defense of the free world. She shares a 1,400-mile border with neighboring Russia. We could not allow the Soviet Union to uh, have these countries come into its orbit. There was a Cold War going on, and it was a Cold War that took place in the Third World by proxies. We have been obliged to enter into a pact uniquement defensif que si jamais quelque chose se passait, nous ne serions pas seuls à faire face à un danger. Something had to be done. Le président Kennedy a assisté à une revue de la flotte avant de suivre de la plage d'Onslow Beach en compagnie du Shah d'Iran d'impressionnantes manœuvres aériennes et navales. Le président Kennedy et le Shah d'Iran ont assisté ensuite à un débarquement au cours duquel 9000 Marines devaient envahir une plage. La manœuvre dura 24 minutes. Il ne s'agissait bien entendu que d'une démonstration. If we are attacked, you are bound to come to our assistance with everything that is available. Military assistance and advice from the United States has many direct and obvious results which are beneficial to a nation such as Iran. Economic and technical aid represent a large American investment over the past 10 years. Without it, Iran might not be the free, independent country she is today. Like his father, the Shah of Iran was fascinated by technology. By buying the most state-of-the-art equipment, Iran funded the U.S. military industry. The Shah became the West's military arm in the East. Être l'un des grands de la planète, cet objectif est déjà en passe d'être atteint dans le domaine militaire. Le Shah consacre au problème militaire une attention toute particulière. Ses achats massifs par milliards de dollars ont mis à la disposition de l'Iran un arsenal considérable et ultra perfectionné. And Tehran began to be a center of much activity for Israel. Also security activity. We had security relations with, with Iran. We sold them uh, military equipment. They were interested in common developments. They developed a great interest between us and Iran, which were of great strategic uh, impact. And there were meetings at high levels between the Shah of Iran and leaders of Israel. And uh, many discussions used to take place as, place as to how the Middle East would become a, a Middle East of peace, of security, of tranquility, of, of, of hope, and not just an Arab, uh, Sunnite, um, extreme uh, element in the area which controlled the area. In Avalin Tazribe, Oitullah Khomeini would pare a warrior shodani dar arsi a fakiri a novini ke dar duri a pahlevi dovum a was shodabut. Imam dar Avala amr nemi hos regime rotahir bedahat. Imam dar Avala amr shahro nasi hatkat. فرمود دست از رابطه با سهیونیست و اسرائیل بردار اسیر آمریکا نباش به قوانین اسلام تن بده پادشاهی تو بکن 
But the Shah of Shahs had to adapt to Kennedy's new America and make Iran a showcase for liberalism. He abolished martial law, privatized the press, gave women the vote. Most of all, he launched major land reform. The White Revolution had begun. C'est une sorte de révolution socialiste qui part d'en haut, qui part de l'échelon suprême. Oui, tout à fait. Parce qu'il y a 20 ans, j'avais dit à, mon, à des gens ici chez nous, même euh, ouvertement, que, écoutez, si nous n'arrivons pas à donner à, à notre peuple et euh, au pays une évolution par en haut, nous devrons nous attendre à une révolution par en bas. Ce qui a mis, euh, évidemment, contre le chat, euh, toute l'aristocratie terrienne, mais aussi euh, euh, toute l'église chiite, car les mollahs étaient parmi les plus grands propriétaires terriens de l'Iran. In order to put a lot of pressure upon the religious leaders, especially in order to alienate them, and uh, trying to bring a kind of system of the division between politics and religion, Therefore, the revolution as they made it. Rouhaniyat Shi'a and in the head of Imam Khomeini, from the start of Muhammad Reza Shahi, was a part of it. He thought that with this revolution, with the name of Shah of Mardum and this referendum that he has, it is in fact the revolution of the revolution of his. Just as his father had to contend with Modaris, the Shah had to face opposition from Ayatollah Khomeini. The Qom cleric propounded violent sermons against America, reform, and the monarchy itself. For the Shah, there was only one option. Khomeini had to go. In October 1964, an airliner took off from Iranian soil with Ruola Khomeini on board. Deported first to Turkey, then to Iraq. Iran was replaying the fateful cycle of assassinations, coups, and exile. Mohammad Reza Pahlavi thought he had attained absolute power. In reality, he had opened Pandora's box. In 1967, in a move resembling a latter-day Napoleon, the Shah of Shahs crowned himself Light of the Aryans. He built a num number of dams in Iran, hydraulic uh, electric stations. L'État est devenu le magicien, le sourcier qui frappe de son bâton la province déshéritée, construit un barrage, collecte l'eau et fait les frais d'une vaste installation d'irrigation. But we want to couple modern technology with the spirit of our old a civilization, you know, 3,000 years old. Being a reformer was not enough for the absolute ruler. Brushing aside the centuries, the Shah of Iran decided to directly address Cyrus, the king who unified the Persian Empire two and a half thousand years before. Guests from around the world were invited to the megalomaniac celebrations in Persepolis. But there was one notable absence, the Iranian people. In a voice charged with emotion, the Shah addressed the spirit of the long dead king. Shahan Shah Iran, Vaz John Ebi Milletiman. Oh, Cyrus, great king, king of kings, Hakamanian king, king of the land of Iran, I, the Shah and Shah of Iran, offer these salutations from myself and from my nation. The time had come to settle old scores. Iran had retrieved its glory. 
Emulating his father once again, the Shah rebelled against foreign influence. The oil crisis of 1973 would be the trigger he was looking for to demonstrate his power. The National Iranian Oil Corporation, along with its uh, sister uh, companies in, in state-owned companies in the whole of the Middle East, uh, began to run the show. It was the first major shock, oil shock in the world. The price went up. 400% uh, within two, three months. Pugnacious, determined, even arrogant, Mohammed Pahlavi was ready to fight. He stood up to the world, effecting multiple interventions, declarations, and interviews. Global economies teetered. The king of oil dreamed he was master of the world. You are de l'Europe. Pourquoi est-ce que vous devriez gagner en taxes plus que ce que nous gagnons dans nos matières périssables? When OPEC was created, the main purpose of that organization was to be able to have a say in determination of prices in the world. And the Shah of Iran actually was in favor of a strengthening OPEC. Vous avez bâti votre richesse, l'épanouissement de votre industrie, et tout cela simplement à cause de ce pétrole bon marché qui vous venait à flot. So he was increasing Iranian output, but at the same time uh, denouncing the West for not paying enough and um, calling for ever higher prices. Aucune industrie qui puisse avoir un caractère de cartel, de trust, ne devrait être dans la main des particuliers pour ne pas créer des cartels. There were lots of these uh, kind of deals, if you like, secret deals, um, but they were all powerful, the, 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 the cartel, if you like. Les pétroles devraient être dans la main de l'État et non de compagnies qui ont fait des profits de 500, 600, 700 cette année. Personne n'en dit rien. Les couleurs iraniennes flottaient sur Versailles lorsque l'empereur d'Iran survolait en hélicoptère le prestigieux décor que la République réserve à ses hôtes officiels. He went after the idea of bringing the nuclear technology to Iran. Nous ne sommes pas capables de trouver ces nouvelles sources d'énergie. Nous n'avons euh, ni les possibilités, ni les laboratoires, ni la technologie. Mais vous, euh, l'Occident, vous l'êtes. La France était à la recherche de partenaires. La France a toujours estimé que l'utilisation pacifique de l'énergie nucléaire devait être mise à la disposition des pays en voie de développement. C'était le cas de l'Iran. Qu'est-ce que nous pouvons acheter en France D'abord, euh, vos centrales nucléaires. Vous êtes en avance dans cette voie. برنامه هسته ایران توسط امریکایی ها با همکاری امریکایی ها و بعد فرانسوی ها هم در تبادل دانشجو و هم در ایجاد زیرساخت های مربوط به برنامه هسته ایران و سازمان انرژی اتمی ایران شکل گرفت ایران شد ایران پرسویوانس پولیتیک دوستیسمان اندوستریل ویان اکیریر 25% دو کپیتال دو رودیف En somme, après l'achat de deux centrales nucléaires, des accords de coopération technique entre les deux pays, c'est le tour du combustible nucléaire. Mais en contrepartie de cette prise de participation d'un Eurodif, l'Iran recevra 10% de la production d'uranium enrichi de pierre latte. De plus, le chat vient d'accorder un prêt d'un milliard de dollars que recevra le commissariat énergie atomique. Ce qui, avouons-le, mettra du beurre dans les épinards pour développer le programme nucléaire français. Les conversations commencées en tête à tête se sont poursuivies à l'Elysée au cours d'entretiens élargis qui ont permis aux deux chefs d'État de faire le point sur la coopération économique entre leurs deux pays. Toutes les précautions ont toujours été prises pour s'assurer que euh, ce que nous faisions en matière de développement nucléaire avec ces pays-là ne pouvait pas servir à des fins militaires. Shah Iran, Mohammad Reza Shah, a fait que les affaires de la Shahi پیشوا هم باشه 
برای همین احزابی که حتی طرفدار خودش بودن همه رو منحل کرد و حزب واحدی را تحت عنوان حزب رستاخیز به وجود آورد. Iran would not have made progress obviously in a truly democratic. Well, what is democracy anyway? Democracy? Yes. How do you define democracy? Don't we have democracy in the United States? Well, not according to what the Greeks used to say in the public places. Well, we elect our leaders. You are not elected. Yes, but how do you elect your leaders? According to Watergate, it's a special kind. You will acknowledge that the United States is a much more democratic society than in Iran. Then? Than your own, than Iran. Yes, but what do you mean by democracy? Again? I, I mean freedom of thought. I mean freedom of expression. To, I mean to what extent? Press, to what extent? I mean electing leaders. I mean opposition. To what extent? Well, to what extent? You... Yes, to what extent? If it is a self-destructive, masochist, kind of thing that will permit you all kind of uh, fraud and corruption, you have it. A permissive democracy. Son style de vie, l'image qu'il donnait de sa famille, ses, ses promenades en Occident, ses, euh, ses séjours dans les stations de ski, euh, faisait apparaître un personnage, une famille, un entourage qui n'avait plus aucun rapport avec la population iranienne. Et lui a vécu dans l'illusion qu'il était populaire. Euh, on poussait devant lui des paysans qui lui baisaient la main et il s'imaginait qu'il était populaire. So I think we had a false sense of security and stability. Can you imagine that in January 1st, 1978, Jimmy Carter made the famous speech? Iran, because of the great leadership of the Shah, is an island of stability in one of the more troubled areas of the world. And then by the end of 78, it was all over. Le lien qui est tellement important entre un monarque et son peuple, quand ça marche, ce lien était véritablement rompu. استعداد جامعه استبداد بود که این زمینه را فراهم میکرد بعد از استبداد هر کسی بر طبق یکی از اینا بود که کینه پیدا میکرد یک کسی ممکن بود فکر کنه که به مذهبش توهین شده به آزادیش توهین شده نابرابری هستش جرم و فساد هست L'Occident, qui était le partenaire du Shah d'Iran, n'a pas su lui imposer de laisser des soupapes et une expression politique et un début de monarchie constitutionnelle qui peut-être aurait rendu inutile pour les Iraniens le recours par les mosquées et par l'Ayatollah Khomeini. Figurez-vous un peu de ce qui se passerait si l'Iran adoptait une attitude Euh, non amical avec les pays euh, de l'Ouest, disons. During his 14 years in exile, Imam Khomeini had ample time to meditate on Iran's destiny over the past hundred years. After being forced to watch from the sidelines, he would finally become a player again. It was not as an opponent that he would return to Iran, but as a revolutionary. Soon, he would represent Islamism to the world. Iran, 
به وجود آمده بود در زندان ها که ما هم بودیم همه نوع افکار بود The first revolution was, was led by students and the like It was not a, 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 a revolution led by the mullahs They took it over زمان ما خیلی از مبارزان ضد رژیم شاه رو در موردشون میشنیدیم که اینها رو دستگیر میکنن شکنجه میدن Are you satisfied with the, the methods which uh, Savak uses to get confessions and to get convictions? Because well, they are also they very are, much uh, They are improving more and more every day. You have been accused of torturing people too in the UK. We're not proud of it. Well. به نظر نمی اومد که حکومت شاه حکومتی باشه که بشه باهاش مذاکره کرد و در واقع از طریق اصلاحات مردم خواسته هاش رو پیش ببرن. Mais vous considérez systématiquement toute opposition à votre personne, à votre régime Pas du tout, je parle simplement du marxisme, soi-disant marxisme. Parce qu'il existe à notre connaissance en tout cas une opposition, une opposition religieuse assez forte aussi. Non, ça c'est pas, ça c'est pas sérieux. Blinded by the power play between Washington and Moscow, the Shah did not see that the world had changed. In Iran and the Middle East as a whole, revolution was now religious. هم انقلابی بود هم اسلامی یعنی ماها که مذهبی های پیرو و امام بودیم خب هم انقلاب کرده بودیم علیه استبداد و استکبار و در چارچوب اسلام هم بود جمعی هم بودن که خیلی به اسلام توجه نداشتن فقط انقلاب رو حالا یا ملیگرایی داشتن یا سوسیالیستی بود امام خمینی کنتری تو ده آل دیز کنگز آف میتودز آف موفمنت هی بیلیفت این فوندمنتال و رادیکال موفمنت از اسلامیک موفمنت ریلیجیس پیپل دی فارت ویلند از یو نو اگنست دی ستودنس آدر گروپس هاد نو چویس آدر دن جوینینگ دی موفمنت خود ما قبل از اینکه ایشون بیان یه شورای انقلابی غیر رسمی تأسیس کرده بودیم September 7th 1978 for the first time demonstrators demanded the Shah's departure and the return of Imam Khomeini That evening martial law was declared The next day Friday September 8th The army opened fire on the crowd gathered in Saleh Square. was a bloodbath. Hundreds died. The blood of the people became the blood of the martyr. Ritual Shiite signs mixed seamlessly with revolutionary symbols. For the Shah, it was already too late. Naturellement, il faut aller vers une démocratisation. Et nous allons adopter les mêmes lois qui existent, disons, en France. Pour les libertés d'expression, liberté de manifestation, nous allons vous copier. Et 
c'est ma volonté, après avoir mûrement réfléchi, que c'est la voie à suivre. Carter a, a dit à, à, à Giscard et aux autres chefs d'État qui étaient réunis à la Guadeloupe euh, qu'ils considéraient que le chat était perdu. En ce qui concerne l'ayatollah Roméni, il est venu en France dans des conditions régulières et il s'est installé comme, euh, non pas un réfugié politique dont il n'avait pas le statut, mais comme un étranger euh, en résidence en France. Donc on l'a accueilli, il a été à nofle le château là, euh, à peine installé, il a enregistré sur des cassettes des prêches incendiées euh, que ses amis iraniens euh, transmettaient à Téhéran et les haut-parleurs répétaient euh, sur les toits de, de Téhéran, d'une building à l'autre, ces prêches enflammées. Which was really quite quite effective. It became apparent that uh, he was the uh, he was the opposition. Khomeini obviously used religion to stir up uh, the masses and uh, give them a voice. He articulated their resentment in religious terms and also, incidentally, in anti-Western terms. Now it was Mohammad Reza Pahlavi's turn for exile. Since the start of the 20th century, Iran has been rocked by repeated earthquakes. The Shah was following the fate of those who went before him, the last Qajars, the Ayatollah Kashani, and Mossadegh. As he departed, did he remember standing on that self-same airport tarmac when he repatriated his father's remains from Egypt? The Shah of Shahs left Darius's nation for the last time, making way for the return of Shiite Islam that he had sought to erase. There might have been tears in the eyes of the Shah as he left Iran for what could be the last time. But there was nothing but sheer delight on the faces of the demonstrators who took to the streets of the capital in their thousands to celebrate the departure of the man they have hated for so long. Jeudi dernier, dès le lever du soleil, plus de 3 millions de personnes se rendent sur le parcours qui effectuera l'Ayatollah. Des milliers de paysans venus souvent de fort loin campent à l'entrée de Téhéran depuis une semaine. who the one single man in Iran is who has more following than anybody else and therefore more power. It is Ayatollah Khomeini. John Suchet, News at 10 in Tehran. Il est arrivé à transmettre à l'Occident une image de gentil gourou euh, plaidant pour l'harmonie universelle et le, le bonheur des peuples. Et euh, en fait, quand on l'a vu débarquer en Iran, on, on s'est aperçu qu'il y avait une toute autre dimension, une, une férocité euh, évidente du personnage, et, mais aussi une capacité à, à diriger, à prendre les choses en main, à éliminer euh, ses opposants de façon impitoyable. The Imam Khomeini's return marked the onset of a cycle of revolutionary violence. In the name of the most hardline factions, the Ayatollah Kalkali organized purges. Reza Shah's tomb was destroyed by the Revolutionary Guards. 
Dignitaries from the former regime were sentenced by summary courts and executed. The year was year zero. Then came the establishment of the Islamic Republic, the consecration of the supreme leader, and the amalgamation of civil and religious law. Once again, Iran was inventing, again choosing extremes, again holding itself up to global disgrace. The contemporary issues that we have in today's world are overshadowed by the events of the Islamic Revolution and particularly by the takeover of the American embassy. The hostage crisis began on November 4th, 1979. The students decided to take action on their own as a, a revolutionary movement, as a student movement and uh, to take an action which would prevent any sort of plot against the Islamic Republic and that would uh, keep and ensure the integrity of the revolution. I got a call about six o'clock in the morning from my regional deputy. I was chief of Near East South Asia Division in the Operations Directorate. And his words were, they're coming over the wall. These uh, activists were coming into the embassy. One of the voices that rings most clearly in my mind was her saying, at a certain point, <clears throat> if they've broken through the door, we're going down now. And then the phone was open for a while, and you could hear some noise in the background, and then it went dead. We have to go back to the context in which the students took that decision. Uh, those were the early months after the Islamic Revolution. The country was uh, uh, practically uh, in shambles. The coup d'etat of 1953 against Dr. Mohammad Mossadegh was a very, very dark moment of our history. It had taken the country into years of foreign domination, colonialism, and dictatorship. We were deeply conscious of the fact right from the start that the, the resentment of the 1953 coup and the American role in that uh, was deeply seared on the souls of the Iranians. The students felt that once again, the revolution is uh, under constant threats, foreign threats, and that there might be a repetition of history. But in this آثار خیلی زیادی منجر می شد نه این فکر رو نمی کردیم فکر می کردیم که چند روز قضیه حل می شود تموم می شود میره سابقه ای هم در دنیا از این جریان به این شکل وجود نداشت اما به دلیل پیچیدگی هایی که تو قضیه رخ داد ناخواسته این قضیه طولانی شد بدون اینکه که کسی بتونه اونو در کوتاه مدت حلش کنه so finally, after months of this, uh, an operation was conceived that would be short of all-out war, uh, and yet would get the hostages out. The so-called rescue mission <clears throat> did turn out to be a disaster for the administration. The whole episode was very humiliating to the U.S. The American commandos were wiped out in a sandstorm. As the ultimate humiliation, Khomeini's move to finally free the hostages favored Ronald Reagan's election to the White House. But these burnt out helicopter wrecks portended other wars on the horizon. As the 
چه کسانی بهره بردن چه کسانی چه کسانی ضرر کردن آیا این واقع تونست بهانه بشه برای کنترل و در جا زدن اون روحیه انقلابی ایرانی ها و اون فرصتی که انقلاب ایران داشت تو منطقه ایجاد میکرد رابطه سفارت امریکا با وقوع جنگ در ایران چیز جنگ عراق علیه ایران چیز Today the walls of Tehran still display the image of a benevolent Imam Khomeini But the capital's icons also portray the wounds of a nation at war, the memory of which holds faster than the pious images. The Iran-Iraq war was uh, uh, one of the more brutal wars around at the time. Uh, it brought uh, into opposition two of the big oil-producing countries Uh, Iranian oil suffered because of it, um, and so did Iraqi oil, because the war was fought largely uh, um, around the oil fields of the northern Gulf. question whether the Iraq uh, and the Iranian war, Saddam Hussein's war against Iran, whether this was something uh, of a combination of the West against the Islamic Republic of Iran, it certainly was. During the war, about Saddam هر یکشون هم دلیلی داشتن برای این همکاری با صدام غربی ها برای اینکه منافعشون رو در ایران از دست میدادن The United States didn't wish to see a victorious Iran dominate its region ارتجاع منطقه هم به دلیل نگرانی از سرایت انقلاب به کشورهای اونا The US began to help uh, Saddam Hussein with uh, intelligence information, particularly technical intelligence on order of battle. Saddam Hussein was fighting the war against the uh, spread of the Iranian Shiite revolution into the Middle East. This is, was a, a battle to prevent the Shiites from uh, breaking out and, uh, and, and, and beginning to infest the Middle East with its uh, religious and with its extreme uh, fervor. On peut dire qu'en Occident, le, la peur de la, rév la révolution islamique et de ses répercussions possibles dans l'ensemble du monde arabo-musulman l'emporte assez nettement sur les critiques qu'on peut concevoir à l'égard du régime de Saddam Hussein, qui a encore à l'époque euh, l'image d'un régime certes très autoritaire et très dur, mais moderniste. Le feeling dans les US, peut-être uh, mistakenly, je pense, c'était que les Iraniens étaient plus de troubles que les uh, Irakis. Iran and Iraq plunged into an eight-year war that caused the death of over one million Iranians. Like the Great War in Europe, it was fought in the trenches with gas and massacres. But it mobilized the people. Millions of volunteers joined the Revolutionary Army. This was the national glue. Iran was its own religion. during the, what we call uh, the eight-year imposed war or uh, the holy defense that we had 
uh, this was a, a matter of free will, a decision uh, to, to fight for freedom, for independence, for dignity, like many freedom fighters in the world. Most of these young people are educated and brought up during the regime of the Shah with a very westernized, western-oriented educational system. Uh, so they're not brought up as religious, what they call zealots or fanatics, no. In the Afrod, Ashur Shahadat Budan, به معنای این نبود که می‌خواستن خودکشی کنن. به معنای این بود که جانشون رو فدای یک مسئله بسیار بزرگتری از جانشون می‌کردن. چیز کردیم که مثلا گفتیم وای سربازی تموم مثلا برسه نه گفت نه من می‌خوام برم جبهه. ایشون در سال 62 در عملیات بند فجر چهار به شهادت رسید. ایشون زمانی که جنگ شد با وجود اینکه واقعا عشق و علاقه به درس داشت مرتب در مسجد بود. همیشه عشق و علاقه اصلا به خصوصی به نماز خدا قرآن داشت. مسئله دوم هویت بود. ایرانی ها مدت ها بود که هویتشون از دست داد. اون شکوه عظمت گذشتهشون از دست رفته بود به دنبال یک عرصه هایی میگشتن که خودشون رو بازیابند بنابراین جنگ تبدیل شد به یک بازیابی و هویت ملی و این اولین جنگی بود که ایرانی ها بعد از 200 سال پیروز میشدن How many of those present at the martyr's cemetery on this day of memory lost a father son or friend How was it that they could uh, actually relate themselves to a, uh, a leader who is much older than them? Imam Khomeini was about 75 years old at that time. These people are uh, 19, 20. How do they make this, this connection, this spiritual connection? As the Iran-Iraq war came to an end, Imam Khomeini died. On the death of its leader, the nation, orphaned but at last united, wept for a century of dashed and deluded hopes. As the people of Iran stood there crying and lamenting, how could they imagine that their mourning, like their revolution, was terrifying the world? Since 1979, Iran has sunk deeper into isolation. Outside its borders, it has waged open and secret wars the hostages in Lebanon, the terrorist attacks in Paris, the Rushdi Fatwa, the Eurodif affair and the Gorgi affair. International opinion has put Iran in the dock. The return of the nuclear question has further fueled the confrontation. Dans l'affaire nucléaire iranienne, c'est le Shah d'Iran qui avait commencé. Soutien et applaudissements occidentaux. C'est l'ayatollah Khomeini qui arrête. Mais on n'a pas besoin de ça. Et ce sont les Iraniens qui recommencent, le régime islamique qui recommence quand ils sont confrontés aux attaques irakiennes avec armes chimiques. Ce n'est pas une sorte de 
priorité d'une révolution islamique en furie. C'est une raison nationale. The international powers beat a path back to Tehran as they had done in Reza Shah and Mossadegh's day. Europe, Russia and China all intervened. Discord reigned. سخن گفتیم به این سخن هم میگیم و حق قانونی ماست و اون این که ایران هم مثل همه کشورها به خصوص ایران با ملت بزرگواری که داره حق دارد که همه فناوری های مدرن رو داشته باشه و البته اون رو در خدمت سول به کار بگیر The big global authorities came too as they had done a half century before starting with the International Atomic Energy Agency all with the same question what does Iran really want? Iran is not the only one who is 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 the only one. The weapons of the Kushtar are not the only one who is the only one who is the only one who is the only one. We can't even be able to rely on a declaration of this kind to raise all the concerns. And even if we were to do an Islamic law, we know that in an Islamic law, there are things that are prohibited, but that in the case of urgency, in the case of vital urgency, we can go back to that. Iran has pledged in the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty not to develop a nuclear weapon. Do we think they are developing a nuclear weapon? Of course, they intend to, of course they are. Iran has pledged in the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty not to develop a nuclear weapon. Do we think they are developing a nuclear weapon? A battle of words and images raged. Iran blew hot and cold, and war, real war, settled in the region, everywhere, relentless and obsessive. The first Gulf War broke out. The missiles launched on Israel by Saddam Hussein announced the post-communist era. یکی از خشنترین و بیرحمانترین آن جنایت ها حمله تروریستی علیه شهروندان آمریکایی بود من به نام ملت و دولت جمهوری اسلامی ایران و بر اساس اصول روشن و محکمی که بدان معتقدم این اقدام ضد انسانی و ضد اسلامی را محکوم کردم یا این وره موسیون لپوپیلاسیون ایرانیان ایفو توسور لو رپلی C'est l'époque où les Iraniens spontanément sont descendus dans la rue avec des petites bougies allumées, où le gouvernement a eu quelques phrases de condoléances, où les mollahs dans leur prêche du vendredi ont cessé pendant plusieurs semaines de lancer des appels à la mort de l'Amérique. Nukte Ajib, Axel Amel, y est que n'est-ce pas une raftor insani, achlari? و البته عادی مردم ایران در اظهار همدردی با قربانیان این اتفاق ناگوار که در 11 سپتامبر در ایالات متحده افتاد Our second goal is to prevent regimes that sponsor terror from threatening America or our friends and allies with weapons of mass destruction Some of these regimes have been pretty quiet since September the 11th but we know their true nature ما از هیچ کس نمی ترسیم ما قدرت و توانایی لازم را برای دفاع از حقوق خودمون همیشه داریم ایران اگرسیبلی پرسوز ایز ویپنز این اکسپورتز ترر ویل این انالیکتد فیو رپرس دی ایرانیان پیپلز حوپ فر فریدم حاسخش این بود که ایران محور شیطانی ستیتس لایک دیز این در ترست آلائیز constitute an axis of evil. Yet America had in fact been struck by Arab and Sunni radicalism from Saudi Arabia. On my orders, the United States military has begun strikes against Al-Qaeda terrorist training camps and military installations of the Taliban regime in Afghanistan. In Afghanistan, is very famous as the graveyard of the empires. The Mongols, the British, the Soviets, and right now, the American and NATO's. Therefore, they make mistake, mistake. À l'époque de la de l'intervention américaine en Afghanistan, les les Iraniens donnaient de sérieux coups de main aux Américains à l'époque. Mais ce qui s'est passé, il n'y a pas de malheureux hasard. C'est comme un espèce de tango. Quand il y en a un qui fait un pas en avant, c'est l'autre qui fait un pas en arrière. Jusqu'à présent, on n'est jamais arrivé à ce qu'au même moment, il y a un moment suffisamment favorable pour que des deux côtés, on soit dans le même état d'esprit.
After Afghanistan, America continued its preventive war in Iraq. My fellow citizens, at this hour, American and coalition forces are in the early stages of military operations to disarm Iraq, to free its people, and to defend the world from grave danger. این رئیس جمهور آمریکا شرم نمیکنه در همین دو سه روز اخیر باز گفته است که ما در عراق به دنبال دموکراسی است یعنی اصلا خجالت در قاموس این حضرات اصلا معنا نداره This is George W Bush the president of the United States At this moment the regime of Saddam Hussein is being removed from power and a long era of fear and cruelty is ending American and coalition forces are now operating inside Baghdad and we will not stop ادعی در هزاران کیلومتر دورتر از کشور خود سرزمین های دیگران را اشغال کنند در امور آنان دخالت نمایند و بر منابع نفتی و غیر نفتی و گذرگاه های حیاتی آنان مسلط شوند protect israel secure oil resources ensure democracy George Bush's Middle East policy involved putting an end to Islamic Iran. If Iran gets a nuclear weapon, then uh, certainly Saudi Arabia, Egypt, maybe even Jordan uh, will try to get it. And uh, this will, send, uh, this will uh, uh, create a lot of chaos uh, in the region. Their leader is a danger to his own people, to the region, to the world. Is a disgrace to the ancient Iranian people and tradition. Is a disgrace to the values of Islam and all religions. Regime Zionisti, Terahte Khushkide, and Puside is that by one tufan, dar ham khahat shikast. I think that one thing the Iranians must have learned by now, and that is that you can expect from Israel the unexpected. The rhetoric has many participants. Of course, Israel is part of it. But the Iranians are the ones who have really stepped it up and have injected into it both wording and ideas which are just historically and morally unacceptable. But Israel must also face the shifting tides in the east. In Lebanon, the Caucasus, the Persian Gulf, Afghanistan and Iraq, Shiites are rising to the fore. I think the rise of Shiism, as exemplified by Iran, is a, uh, is a phenomenon that uh, really uh, comes out of the decision to uh, invade Iraq. Iraq is a decision that has been made to be a country Shi'i, or the majority of Shi'i that has been made by the government. This is completely true. The reason is that برای بعضی ها پیش آمد این بود که حرکت عراقی ها تأثیر بگذاره روی عراب دیگر شیعی که در اطراف عراق هستند. سینا همبستگی جدی عقیدتی با هم دارن عواطف مشابه و یه نیروی واقعی هستند. ایسی دیز امریکان به شویوی دپی کلکوز آنه لی رکومنداشیون de, de beaucoup de personnalités américaines, notamment Baker, et avaient entamé un dialogue avec, avec l'Iran, tout ça se présenterait tout à fait autrement. Et on arrêterait instantanément de parler de la menace de l'archite. Both the Iranian leadership and also the American leadership have to look beyond the atmospherics of the relationship today, evaluate the geopolitical and strategic stakes involved, and try to pursue a rational policy which I think is still possible with a, little, with a little more determination and with a little more of rationality on both sides, with a little less of rhetoric and particularly insulting or threatening rhetoric. We and America can do it with them. The security of the country without Iran is not possible to imagine and not possible to imagine. کمربند امنیتی منطقه بدون ایران محال مردم ایران برای این موقعیت تاریخشون خون دادن، پول دادن، هزینه کردن. برای این مردم ایران ظرف این سالا هر اقدامی کردن برای جبران این تحقیر بوده ظرف صده های اخیر. من از کشوری میام که هر روز صبح یک زلزله درش اتفاق میفته 
و تا شب با پس لرزه های اون زلزله مردم سر میکنن و فردا صبح دوباره زلزله دیگری رخ میده Over the past hundred years, Iran has tested the main experiments of the 20th century. It was the first Middle Eastern country to adopt a parliament, nationalize its resources, spark an Islamic revolution. Tomorrow it will no doubt again serve as a laboratory for the future. It has possessed oil and craved nuclear power, for better or for worse. Throughout their long march toward modernization, the Iranian people have fought, often bitterly, to keep their identity. The question is not, will we have to contend with Iran tomorrow? But what kind of Iran will we have to contend with? This question is key for Iranians, for Muslims everywhere, and for the world. <laughs>